Benji back to the heavyweights now. Nebraska's Scott Huff. Big smile on his face making his way out to the cage. This is uh, Huff's second appearance in the XFO. He fought Adam Masajewski back in May at XFO 51. Masajewski scooped and slammed him right after the opening bell, then gave him a huge ground and pound beating, eventually submitting him with a Camaro right before the end of the round. The pictures of Huff, some more legendary XFO pictures, Looked like he had a golf ball or two. Like I said earlier, under his eye, after Maya landed some really big elbows. Pumps in his 10th year fighting as a pro, and he's looking to shake a two-fight losing streak. Well, he's a very, very big guy, is Scott Huff. And he's fought in the XFO before, as we said, just recently losing to Addy, Adam Maciejewski, which that's a very, very tough guy to have on top of you. and. Uh, He's a very experienced professional, but he's up against another experienced professional, so it's going to be up to him to keep this fight where he wants it. He's got a lot of submission wins, KO and TKO wins, and if he can get on top with these heavyweights, it's much harder when a 250 pound plus man is on top of you. When he has proper technique and he can use that offensively, it's just, it's just twice as hard to get up into that guy than it is to get up a, a, a lighter weight fighter. And it takes more technique and it takes more energy. So that's why you see heavyweight fights usually are slower. Unless you're watching Junior Dos Santos, of course. <laughs> then, then they're not very slow. Team Curran MMA, former Golden Gloves champ, making his fifth appearance in the XFO. He's won all four of his previous bouts. He beat Aaron Ware, who we saw Daniel James just beat earlier. Korea's only loss coming to Daniel James at Bellator 112, which was his only fight in 2014. At his best, Eric Korea closes the distance quickly, strikes with accuracy, his pro debut against Lance Harvey at XFO 46 being a perfect example of that. He's also an exceptional counter puncher, as you would expect from a Golden Gloves champ. Looking to start another winning streak here tonight, Mike. He likes to finish guys in the first round. He finished at XFO 46 in a minute 52. Finished at XFO 49 at 334 in the first. A guy who likes to throw his hands and at 33 years of age is still improving. Having good boxing, having just anything to translate over into MMA, it's just a totally different game then because you have a background in something else that you can feed off of. A lot of guys have wrestling as that home base. And just in recent years have we seen guys at the top of the game who've only trained in mixed martial arts. And it's always, always very good to have um, another strong suit, I would say. And at Golden Gloves Boxing, there you go. He knows he wants the box. Now he can work every day in the gym on takedown defense, 
stand-ups and boxing if that's what he wants his game to be. Two big men here. Yeah. It is clear that Korea is at a, a, a noticeable height disadvantage. And this should be interesting to watch Huff this time. He didn't get a chance at all, really, against my, uh, Mesa Juski to show what he could do. Uh, tonight, I could see this turning into a slugfest with both these guys standing. We'll see what happens here, though. Korean Huff, XFO 54. Rob Madrigal, our referee for this bout. And here we go. Thunderous low <laughs> kick there to the inside of Korea's thigh. That one landed with authority. Just letting Korea know he's there. Whiffs on that one. Raj Korea definitely can tell he's got the boxer's footwork. Very light on his feet, especially for a big guy. Yeah, the way Huff is standing up with his hips sort of forward, this definitely reminds me of a Muay Thai stance. And the way that he turned when he spun through that kick, that was the Muay Thai way to, to, to miss a roundhouse kick as he come back through with the uh, ready to check a leg or body kick. Korea bouncing around, light on his feet. Yeah. He's favoring keeping, keeping that cushion on the outside. He keeps maintaining that cushion, maintaining that cushion. It leaves him at kicking distance, though, and that's what Huff has been trying to capitalize on at the moment. Wow, thunderous leg kick. That's two now for Huff early on. Really, really solid. He landed the shin a little more on that one. The foot is very loud and still does a lot of damage. I mean, uh, you, can hit, you can hit somebody with your foot very hard, but, I mean, with your shin, it's like you're walking around with a baseball bat Ooh. all the time. There's a baseball bat connecting your knee <laughs> to your foot, and you can hit people with it. And it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> to watch, not to be hit with. Right. <laughs> Lunging overhand right from Korea. Off able elbow. to hold Korea in the clinch there. Korea changing that around now, gets an underhook, but is turned right away. Under over here, good knee to the thigh of Korea. Look at those little clinch breaks there from Korea, pressing the elbow in, very intelligent. Just short on that head kick is Huff. Huff's corner, tell him from the go, they saw something that they liked. I don't know if he hurt Korea with one of those shots. They were well, circling towards this part the, of the cage. It certainly seemed that Korea backed off from exchanging. Big, big knee! Wow! wow. I could not tell if that was to the midsection or the head. We're right behind where that knee just happened, but he threw a vicious knee body. up towards Korea, and Korea came crashing down like a ton of bricks. Wow! A vicious knee from Scott Huff. Makes quick work in the first round here of Eric Korea. Yeah, styles make fights, and this was a good matchup for Huff. Another big dude that he could stand and bang with, and he got the best of Eric Korea. That's what his corner was calling for. His corner was saying, pour it on now. They thought he was potentially hurt. Even if he wasn't hurt, he wasn't interested in exchanging in that moment. And Huff hunted him down and was able to get the finish in the first round. Very, very impressive work from Scott Huff. Good news is Korea looks fine now. He finds his family Korea in the crowd, gives good. him the thumbs up, to let him know he's all right. Turns back to his feet. Good fight, good job by Scott Huff of hunting Korea down and capitalizing on the perfect moment. His corner knew it, and he got the victory. There's Ray Flores.